Relatives were crying for the two civilians killed in North Korea's attack on Yongpyeong Island last month. A funeral was held for the men Monday. Widow Kang Sung Ah said it's too late for authorities to help her now, but she hoped action could be taken so others wouldn't suffer in the future. It's always after death that authorities try to fix what has happened. It's too late, but I beg the authorities to take care of the good, weak, and poor people now, so that incidents like this will never, ever happen again. Tensions have been running high in the region since North Korea's bombardment of the island. It's first targeting a civilian area since the Korean War in the 1950s. The military said South Korean troops were conducting live fire naval drills in the waters off the divided peninsula, although not near the disputed sea border where the attack took place. Activity is continuing on the diplomatic front as well. In Seoul, President Lee Myung Bak was hosting a Japanese delegation. There were meetings scheduled to take place in Washington also, but U.S. and Chinese leaders have already been consulting on the phone. Barack Obama and Hu Jintao had spoken last month in person at the G20 summit in Seoul. In their call, Obama urged China to send its North Korean ally a message its provocations are unacceptable. While the Chinese leader said he was greatly concerned about the current tension, who urged a calm and rational response from all sides. There was still anger on the streets of South Korea's capital, though, with demonstrators carrying banners promoting Seoul's alliance with Washington and denouncing North Korean leaders, including heir apparent Kim Jong-un. Juggling domestic discontent, uncertainty over North Korea's next move, and wary of China's call for resumption of talks on Pyongyang's nuclear activities, the South Korean government continues to face big challenges. Karen Sloan, The Associated Press.